Hey, do you guys remember apes? I actually think it's been a long while since apes have been in the format or at least been in consideration as a deck engine. If you remember way back when in the degenerate days of Mecha Frieza, um, I remember actually when uh, <laughs> at its peak it won San Jose by none other than Eon Hill. I was trying to get that right. <laughs> I, did, I forgot if it was Eric or not, but it was definitely Eon. Ever since then, apes haven't really been the same. And uh, for good reason. It's It was slow, they were clunky, it took a while to set up. It's susceptible to a lot of different counterplays. Although we might get support for it later on, this isn't an apes deck. But this deck does remind me quite a lot of them. Today, I wanna to talk through a new way to control, and that's Shin Shenron. The leader itself is really not that bad at all. Um, when he attacks, he looks at the top five for a shadow dragon. You you get to pick anything that has attack for it. And at the end of the turn, you're actually able to restand any of the Shadow Dragons. That means one of the blockers, one of the, one of the uh, 20k attackers, the 15k crit, whatever it may be. And of course, the blocker Revenge 9 drop, which we'll talk about in a little bit. On the back side, you actually are able to restand all of the dragons. Of course, he is a regular leader where you swing and you draw one. But the craziest thing is that you're able to actually pay six yellow energy and then play all your Shadow Dragons from your drop. Of course it says seven, but we really only have maybe four targets for that. Uh, the dragon, the one star dragon balls are nice, but you're gonna have to pay energy and you're not gonna be paying seven or eight energy after you pay the six, generally anyway. Maybe the next turn if the game is not over already. And honestly, it's pretty damn cool when we actually look at the engines themselves. Starting with Haze or the Haze engine, the Haze Shadow Dragon, comprising of three different cards. Uh, one is a one drop that isn't affected by any of the skills of the opponents. It still get, can be counterplayed, so you're gonna have to watch out for that. It is only a one cost, so it's kind of little investment for what you're actually getting afterwards. But you do actually pay one yellow energy in order to get a two cost or a three cost uh, haze out of your deck or hand, which right now we only have a three cost uh, that you can actually play, which means in the future, we're probably gonna have a two or three cost as far as support maybe in the next set or expansion. What's interesting about the Haze engine is that basically it replaces itself because when you, well kind of, <laughs> when you pay that red or that yellow energy you get the three drop from your hand or from your deck. And the deck is best so that way you can thin it out a little bit more and that's what you want to do throughout the, throughout the actual game. And then you can choose any four or less shadow dragon from the drop which basically you can get a one cost Haze if you don't have one already in your hand and keep playing that engine or you can play um, something that got KO'd or removed like a Sin Shenron and then keep that going. And then majority of the time if you combo uh, from your hand or from the field or if it attacks for the next card um, that's probably the best target for that because it is four or less. And then you can go ahead and evolve and then keep that chain going. Of course the last piece is that four drop, Sh uh, four drop Shenron, the four drop Haze Shenron? Dragon, whatever, uh, which you can restand from the three drop after swinging with 15k critical, and then now you have a 20k double striker probably on turn two, which most people can't really stop. They're either gonna try to defend it or they're gonna take it. So they have to defend against the 15k attacker, and now they have to def defend against that 20k, which at base, you're, they're gonna have to spend a 10k and as well as a 5k right then and there. Is that 20? A 20k, that 10k, that's that perfect number right there. And of course, the second ability is crazy in which you either combo from your hand from the field or when it attacks, of course, you can KO something that's greater than their energy by pitching another Shadow Dragon, which again, if you use that chain later on, you can either get that card back after you pitch it or you pick pitch any other sh uh, Shadow Dragon for the leader effect or for the Haze Senron uh, effect for the three drop to get it back to your hand. So. You can kind of see as you play the deck how it's supposed to work and how the recursion effects are supposed to work together. And honestly, the Haze engine is great. It allows you to be aggro, which kind of brings it over to the Sin Shenron uh, line in which is more control. It's basically the same thing. You play the one drop, you pay the energy, you get it from the hand or deck, and then you play out the Sin Shenron card in which you can keep your leader tap or their leader tap from attacking, which is just insane value since now you're able to stop any swings. Now you're able to, um, like, for instance, the gameplay is Soul Striker. He's not able to untap any energy from now. Or if he awakens, he's not able to do that. There may be uh, a ruling for that in which, since they still restand, it just says that you, they can't attack with the leader. Um, you have to realize that whenever they restand or awaken, 
they may have that effect fall. So if you are giving that effect, that second Shenron effect to the leader in which is in rest mode and is unawakened, goes to their turn, it restands because it doesn't say not to restand. That's Beerus, not this. And then you awaken, the effect falls off, and now it's a new card, and now they can attack. So if someone can check me on that, that'd be great. I would imagine it is. Similar to Double Strike and other skills, it does fall off. So someone help me out there. But the biggest thing is the, the Blocker Revenge 9-drop, which basically is able to cobalt less anything that goes out on the field. Just makes it anything anything uh, a vanilla. So when we're talking about a Saiyan Kava or Intensifying Power Trunks, or their Union Fusion Gotenks no longer has Double Strike and Dual Attack for the turn, their Kid Goku can't find any balls, those things. You know, there's a lot of different things that it actually does affect and it makes it effective in that way. Um, just the engine is just wild in that in that respect. Of course, all of this is really tied to um, Mecha Meki Ibarra. I want to say I said that right. Uh, he's an absolute monster of a unison card. Yes, you have to pay four, but you're rewarded for a lot of with a lot of effects, and you can actually go ahead and awaken because his effect is three or less, or uh, a four cost unison with specified four cost. That means you only can play Mecha Gabara or the other one. I completely forgot what that was. But if you play it right, even though it is four energy, uh, you'll keep a high life total because you do have the access to the blockers and as well as you're playing yellow. So you're going to be able to survive most of the time. Um, he is a blocker and when a uh, marker is removed, you can now stop, uh, tap down an energy to prevent a play for them. You can now um, tap down their leader from uh, like drawing or really any other effects and as well as uh, preventing another attack after you block one and tap down one of their battle cards. So Mekibara does do a lot and I would say get used to his effects because you can do uh, quite a lot with them. Just remember that it is only one turn or once per turn that is, um, but it is still pretty good. I think just taking control of something Versus the second effect is just icing on the cake. Now I'm not going to go through the whole deck list, um, but we do play things to slow down the game like Nimbus, the new super combo that allows us to attack when you actually do play it for one, uh, or even KO on your turn. Uh, of course, we have the Unison. We do have Vegeta Final Flash um, from taking, from preventing taking critical and as well as double strike when we don't want to as well, which is really, really useful. Since we're playing all yellow, you might as well play it. And to top it all off, our secret is the Cell Zeno secret in which after you either play all of the dragons um, <laughs> when play, paying that six energy or when you have the engine established because now you only need the nine drop and what, two or eh, well, yeah, the nine drop and the three drop pays Shenron in order to uh, successor and then swing for quadruple strike. Like I don't, I don't see what the issue is. So you can do it on turn five. Uh, to get those three cards, or you can do it as early as turn three. So it is pretty damn cool. Because now they, uh, like on turn five or further, or five energy and further, they now have to pitch three and deal with some quadra striking ugly android. Overall, the deck is pretty fun. I haven't had this much fun in a, with a mono yellow deck since I made that hit deck. So it's been a long time. And honestly, if you, I mean, you have access to recursion you have uh, an easy to use engine that has cool effects with it that come back uh, and I think right now it's a really strong tier 2 deck I don't really want to put decks right now in tier 2s like our tiers because I feel like I'm going to be wrong with that but I think it could be better with the support and honestly the more that people pilot either blue yellow or mono yellow or any other color uh, the better it'll get but right now mono yellow seems pretty cool uh, I feel good about it um, but if you haven't noticed we're doing a little bit different for the deck profiles um, I'm going to jump straight into the gameplay. If you want to see, uh, well, if you want to see lines of play and as well as what to do in the gameplay, go ahead and keep watching. If you want to check out the list, it's in the description below on the website. And of course, if you want to get a shirt like this, uh, it's in our store on Spreadshirt. So check that out as well. Let's get to the gameplay. All right. So, um, this is actually gameplay with a person I played against, uh, who was playing Soul Striker and I was actually going to go first. And the best thing here, actually go ahead and um, play one of the one drops. And you have a choice of either playing the uh, the Hei Senron or the Sin Shenron. And honestly, playing the Sin Shenron is great because I actually have the nine drop in my hand. Obviously, I can look at the top five and see if I can get a Hei Shenron uh, after that to, to actually evolve. But this is also good because now I can go ahead and um, use this activate main, which I'm going to go ahead and do right now. 
place it into the drop, get it to the from the deck, which is better from my hand, so I can that way I can actually deck thin it, and then lock down his leader. So that that way now he can't untap and he can't draw. Now I have the 30k blocker, revenge blocker, and now it, it uh, lesses everything that he plays out, and he has to go ahead and deal with that. So um, is it, this is exactly what you want to see. And if he does remove it, which I do believe he does do that in this in this uh, game, uh, then that's no problem because I can go I can go ahead and get the chain going again because I do have uh, one in my hand for sure, and the four drop that is, and as well as the nine drop. So this is exactly what you want to see. Uh, he does go ahead and play the Gogeta Unison, which he does pay two, and then he pays two uh, markers in order to get something that's greater greater than my uh, my uh, energy costs. Which uh, I do get to draw two cards. I get to get the one drop out, but then I have to play something in the bottom of my deck because of the East Kai, which is an easy pick because of the four drop I know for sure is in my deck, and now I have to go, I can go go ahead and get one out yet again. So that one worked out pretty well, uh, which is why it's good to uh, consider the different matchups. I think red is a little bit different because they can just kind of minus you and you don't really get the value out of a, a lot of different things, but it is still getting removed, so that's always good. Um, I'm just thinking here, you know, what options do I have and what do I want to see? I want to go ahead and swing with leader so I can see what's at the top five first, and I do get that uh, EX Evolve um, uh, Haze because I do have a Haze in my hand. And I want to go ahead and play that out. Uh, so I can get multiple dragons on the board because I think it's better to have or start building out more dragons than it is not to um, I do want to take advantage of him being tapped out with this 13 or 15k critical and Now I get to go ahead and go swing 15k critical I think it might be good to go to 20 so that way with this super combo He's gonna use and place this super or this master Roshi into his energy and get a free energy um, You know uh, uh, he, he would have to combo something else, but I don't want to lose hand advantage. This, this deck doesn't really keep a huge hand anyway, so that's not too bad. And now uh, swing with that 20k double striker, he's going to go ahead and negate it. So that's good. Got a negate out of his hand. I got two bodies on board, a blocker, 20k double striker, and overall just um, starting out pretty good, I think. So now I have my my, my uh, Makiyabara in my hand, Meki Kubara. Is that how you say it? Okay, I'm not even gonna try. Someone's gonna someone's gonna correct me somewhere. But I do have my units in my hand, which means I can go ahead and awaken next turn. I'm still at seven life. Um, I can probably take a damage pretty easily here, and I'm just kind of figuring out what I want to do next. This is I might go in the in the article as well, but there is a little bit of awkwardness with the um, the great ape uh, Bardock. You don't even need to really play it in this deck, but it is good as an aggression tool. I draw another 20k double for two that you're getting the same thing with the um, the Hei Shenron as well. So, you know, when you don't have, basically, if you have the energy to, to use uh, on their turn, then it's a perfect card to use and, and get that out there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play the Mechiyabara uh, Unison. And I'm gonna go ahead and swing with Double Strike, because he has that five, I want him to take him down to five to three first. I do believe he negates here, so that's fine. And uh, I have no response, obviously. I, I don't think there's really much in yellow other than the free uh, Vegeta card. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and swing the leader first. I want to see the top five, just in case I see any more EX Evolved targets, uh, either the Sin Shenron or the Haze, before I awaken. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw that too, and as well as untap one, which, uh, of course, my unison on board allows me to do that. I do see the EX Evolve. Um, Excuse me, the AEX Evolved Sin Shenron, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and nice 15k. And uh, I do believe he takes this one, and then I'm going to go ahead and swing with the Sin Shenron. I don't believe. Well, I think I do actually uh, get my, er, my Blocker Revenge out. Because uh, me tapping out at six energy with two blockers that can tap down something, cold blow less the next battle card he can play, and uh, do be a, a blocker revenge. I mean, I'm I'm sitting pretty pretty, and I want to go ahead and aggress as much as I can because now I'm getting these negates out. Now um, I don't I don't really have to worry about too much, and now I have nine cards in my hand. I'm gonna untap my dragons, go ahead and pass, and be good. 
And uh, with Haze on the board, by the way, as soon as something is being played that um, you know Senran, Senran can't really handle, uh, then I can go ahead and combo it from the field, pitch something from my hand, and then uh, KO it. But with this one, it is the Goku Black Unison. He does play three, which uh, in my case, in my mind at the time, uh, I was like, you know, he's probably gonna go ahead and use that second effect to get rid of my Haze, but he's gonna go ahead and swing first, which um, if he awakens, he gets to untap that. And now he's a nice little blocker, but because he swung directly into my Unison, I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of taking the marker and then tap down his uh, his leader. This is huge. Uh, the, that energy is not very important because I know he can untap. Uh, that's not really a big deal for me. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the um, the uh, uh, the leader. Oh, whoops, my bad. But <laughs> I was asking about the uh, the marker there, as you can see, and he forgot that you have to be awakened to, in order to untap um, the unison. So now he doesn't have a blocker. Now that misplay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to capitalize. But since he does have five cards in rest, I think Basil's going to be the best option here to go ahead and draw and then uh, use his effect to to become a 19k until my turn. That's one thing that some some people forget, so don't forget that. It's not just for that turn, it's until your next turn. I don't really agree with the negate here, um, simply because, you know, I can just swing to it again. I was thinking about playing the Gohan just to tap something down, so that way Mechiabara actually has an option uh, or something to tap down. But what I'm going to do here is actually swing into leader. Since I do have that Bardock Ape, I'm going to go ahead and play that out for the two energy in my combo step. Tap down that Goku and then have Mechiabara to have a target to tap down or keep tap down. Tap down. Tapped down. There you go, yeah. Just waiting for those negates. I'm going to go ahead and pay the two. Go for 25 to his 10. I do believe he awakens here because he yeah, has four or less. He doesn't need that unison anymore to awaken. So you could draw those two. Definitely wants to see more cards in his hand. I don't blame him at all. He does take that life, actually. So now at three, it's kind of an interesting um, position that he's in right now. But I'm going to go ahead and tap down that Goku and draw the card as long as there's no counterplays there. Get another super combo. Uh, keep that tap down as well and I can easily go ahead and play another Sin Shenron and keep his leader tapped and I think that's probably the better play here but I do have a lot of options and don't forget that I do still have my um, uh, Cell Zeno in my hand so the 9 drop there plus uh, the Hei Shenron because I do have the 1 drop in order to play it out which I, that's what I was thinking of as well I can go ahead and go for game it's just that uh, do I really want to do that right now? Now I was thinking here, like, hey, I can go ahead and play this one one cost. Uh, I do have that one energy, but I think I'm going to go ahead and keep that open. Just in case I need to use a Vegeta Final Flash or something, or to combo out something. I still have two blockers. I have two super combos. I have Release from Evil. A lot of cool stuff going on right now. I was like, oh well. Just let it, let it rock. That's, that's basically what it is. So he goes to his turn. He's gonna go ahead and uh, charge that Kai. That Goku is gonna be tapped down for now. That's what that marker is. That zero cost marker. I do believe he has that Goku black out again. I'm not sure if he wants to go ahead and re remove uh, something, but that might just happen. So I'm just waiting on him. So a pretty good board, pretty good hand so far. Uh, like I said. Uh, before I don't play any self awakening and, and I think that's something that you just it just depends on your play style and you know experimenting with the deck um, I think the the version of self awakening for me is that is that yellow unison that's my self awakening honestly um, if you want to add like I said the one drop Krillin or anything else to actually help you out that'd be great it's just that it might be more of a sideboard card just depending on the matchup where you have to go a little more aggressive and where they're not attacking you want to see those life uh, those cards in life that is so it goes and 
and combos out the Great Ape Goku. Draw some more cards, I'm sure. I'm gonna go ahead and combo out because it is a quite a useful card. But Basil's pretty good. Like he is good just to have um, like dual attackers, double strikers, things like that are really good in this format because of the um, the unison cards. The more attacks, the more keywords that you have, the better. Uh, since you can go ahead and get rid of all of these markers, so he elected to go ahead and get rid of the double striker, which I don't blame him for. I think he's going to go ahead and draw uh, draw two for the ape. Ten card hand, uh, quite a lot to get through on my end, and I'm trying to decide if I want to go ahead and use that leader effect next turn, that is. But I don't think I do. Tapping out here doesn't seem too beneficial for me. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and charge this. That's my version of the ape. I mentioned in the article, I'm going to mention anyway, that uh, you don't really have to play that card and you don't have to play the ape. It's really either or, whatever you have access to and whatever you can uh, basically afford. I think either one is good. Obviously the ape they can't interact with. Well, they can't really interact with this one either, but um, you can only do it on your turn for the ape and as well as um, you can combo out with it. And I don't think it's that big of a deal uh, if you just run this one instead of the ape. Plus it's nice to be able to draw two on their turn, um, especially if it's early in the game. If you if you draw it like super early, you don't see an ape, you don't see like the Dragon Balls, uh, or if you don't want to pay for that, and you have the two open energy, it's like, why not? And of course, late game like this, where if I'm not at eight cards in hand and I have like three, uh, I'm going to definitely use that now in order to um, see some more cards and keep that going. So I'm going to go with 30k to his um, beamed leader, which is at 20. Have a nice little um, chunky boy there on both ends. So he uses another bean. I didn't catch this at first, but I think he uses the bean on the Goku Black because I was too busy telling him can he not. So he's a 25k leader now, and then his uh, unison is at, actually at um, 20. So I went ahead and kept that Goku nice and put. <laughs> Stay put? Put. I'm going to go with put. I whiffed on that because I, I didn't think I had another. I, I I think all of them are in my life. One of them drop, one in my hand. So I used the one in the hand. And then... Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, he's saying no more dragons. And uh, yeah, Basil is definitely not a dragon. Kind of looks like one though. I comboed out this one because uh, I wanted another target just in case I wanted to use the, uh, the leader effect next time. But as you can see, as this game kind of winds down as he's, excuse me, running out of cards, as well as me um, just beating him down at this point. Uh, you can kind of see how the deck can control. I, I still have uh, Release from Evil, I still have Nimbus, I still have the Vegeta uh, free play. And it gets most decks other than like the Jenks and um, Vigaints. Whatever. <laughs> and, a, and a couple more aggro uh, options or aggro decks. It's, it's pretty comparable. Uh, I was thinking of like, okay, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on. I'm doing math wrong. I only have 11. Anyway, I got to play another one. But then I had another, I had the three drop haze and I was like, I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> um, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can go ahead and rest one. So I went ahead and uh, rested the East Kai. I was like, I forgot. I already had everything that I needed. So I'm going to go ahead and place these with a successor. And now I get to pick three. And uh, from what I remember, he actually do, does have two negates technically, and you'll see why or how. I got rid of the Trunks and the Kefla. The Kefla is absolutely bonkers. It's just too bad he couldn't get that off. The two Trunks is kind of problematic. Uh, he didn't have a unison anyway, so he's going to have to pay that five. And I was like, let me see that negate. So he uses that negate in order to get the Roshi back. Uh, I didn't really have a response to that, so it's not really too big of a deal. So I went ahead and swung again, I do believe, with the Cell Zeno. He still has quadruple strength. He still has that dual attack. So he's going to go ahead and use that Master Roshi. And what's funny here is that I'm still at six life. 
I still have Nimbus. He use use all his resources. He's literally all his negates. <laughs> and honestly, I think you know going back, like if we if we if he changed this deck just a little bit, I think a Boonie would be a little bit better uh, for him. Uh, I think he's going for the long game, which I don't think is really working out uh, against certain decks. But um, I'm happy to at least try to experiment uh, against other matchups. But overall, you know, this this deck doesn't it's not it's not too bad uh, as far as the matchup spread spread go. I think the only thing I really had issues with is again the Jenks or the Jenks. Um, and maybe a couple others. Maybe hand control. Hand control is kind of hard with this. You just gotta be smart with what you drop down. And I went ahead and uh, used the <laughs> leader effect, and I was like, wait a second. Let me go ahead and just uh, swing over with the critical first. Make him take that crit. Uh, I forgot to draw, but it doesn't really matter. This is just for fun at this point. But as this closes out, let me know what you think. Check out the article below for the deck list and um, and what version that you're running, if you have one. Uh, what do you think about the Shadow Dragons? What do you want to see in the next video? I do believe World Martial Arts Goku, maybe even Clash of Fates Goku, will be next uh, using set 10 stuff. So I will see you in the next one.